In chapter 4.5, we're going to finally be able to write down the solution to our heat transfer problem, and we're going to apply the last boundary condition using two tools, superposition and orthogonality, to define the values of the constants of integration. So in the first instance, we have a solution to the heat transfer equation that has an index in it n, and n has any value from 1 to infinity. So how do we know which of these infinite number of solutions is correct? And schematically, uh, we know that the solution lies on the x equal y line as shown here. And we also know that the values of lambda have to be integer values. So pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, so forth. But which particular solution is the correct one? And you can't know this without solving it and working through and comparing the solution to the physical reality. But the answer is you need all of them to get an accurate solution. And you'll remember that any solution to a differential equation can be combined linearly with any other solution, and the combination is a solution. That's the basic premise of superposition. You can just randomly add together solutions of a differential equation, and there's still a solution. So in this case, we're going to add together every single solution of this differential equation, and that means we're going to take on n infinite number of constants of integration. So how do we solve for those constants of integration in order to reach a particular solution? So we have to apply the last boundary condition. And that is that theta equals 1 for any value of c and for the particular value of zeta equals 1. So we'll plug that into our equation. And we still have an infinite number of values of fn to solve for, and we've only got this one boundary condition that we've applied. So, I mean, to be clear, we've got for index 1, f1, then for index 2, f2, index 3, f3, so on and so forth, to infinity. And so we need a way of simplifying this into something tractable. And the trick we're going to use is the orthogonality of the Fourier sine series. So let's take a really quick tangent here. The Fourier sine series basically states that when you multiply one sine function by another sine function with indexed arguments, the only time that integral is going to be non-zero is when m is equal to n. For every other instance, because the Fourier sine series is orthogonal, that basically means that this integral goes to zero. All right, so that sounds kind of tangential, and it is, but let's apply this to our problem. So if we multiply both sides of the heat transfer solution we're looking at by 2 sine m pi xc dx c, and then integrate from x equals 0 to 1, what we get is this expression. On the left-hand side, it used to be theta equals 1, but now we've multiplied by 2 sine m pi xc dx c and integrated. On the right-hand side, we've got that troublesome summation term uh, with a sign in it, but now we've multiplied that sign with an n argument by a sign with an m argument. Uh, the cinch term is basically constant with respect to c. So this is actually simplified. Okay, to solve this, let's actually expand the summation just so we can have a look at it, just for clarity. Um, so just looking at that right-hand side, the first term in the summation is going to be this expression here, first term, and it's our constant of integration, and we've substituted for n equal to 1, 
So the coefficient there is 1. And we can't do anything with the m. That's just there. But we've co substituted for this coefficient n equals 1. For the second term, similarly, we're looking at the second constant of integration and n equals 2. So we replace n equals 2 into the two places where n appears in the formula, but that m remains because we're not summing over m. We're summing over the index n. Same for the third term and so on all the way to infinity. And the addition of an integral is commutative, so we can either add everything in this argument and then integrate, or we can integrate each individual expression and then add them all together. We'll get the same result. So we're going to take advantage of that to note that pretty much every term in this series is going to be zero because most of these terms, n is not equal to m. There's only exactly one term in this whole summation all the way to infinity where n equals m. And that's the only term that has a value. So our complicated summation actually goes away. And the heat transfer equation reduces to the same left-hand side. And the right-hand side, there's one term where n equals m. And so we get a sine squared out of that because it's, you know, the sine of m pi c times the sine of m pi c. And this is the equation we need to solve to determine fm. From here, it's relatively straightforward. If we integrate the left-hand side of the equation, we get a negative cosine term, and we integrate that between the boundaries 0 and 1. On the right-hand side, uh, we have um, two constants, fm is independent of xi, and the hyperbolic sine of m pi is also independent of xi, so we can pull those outside of the integral. And what we're left with is pretty much the exact definition of the Fourier sine series. And it's for the case where n equals m, that's why sine is squared, and so that entire expression has the value 1. That is a massive simplification. So moving on, we apply the integration limits to our left-hand side, and this takes a moment's consideration. So the cosine of m pi is going to change sine alternate to alternately, because if m is even, it's going to be positive valued, and if m is odd, it's going to be negative valued, because you know the cosine of zero is 1 and the cosine of pi is negative 1. So another way of writing that is negative 1 raised to the m power. Okay, so we'll go and substitute that in to our expression, and now we still need to solve for fm, so we can do that, and that is our last constant of integration. And what you'll notice here is that we can use this to determine an infinite number of constants of integration because it's written with respect to that index for the solution. So our last step is to plug this back into the heat transfer solution. So our particular solution becomes theta as a function of c and zeta is the sum from m equals 1 to infinity of this constant of integration, fm, and the solution to our equation. So we'll put a red box around this. That is the solution that we've been working on for the past four lectures. And I think now is a good time to crack a beer. And we'll come back to this and we'll start looking at what those solutions look like in real space. Thank you. See you later.